Hey, how you doing? It's Clayton here from howtodrawcomics.net and buttonbrostudios.com and welcome to today's video. I've got Michael Bancroft in the house, the one and only creator of The Lucent and he is with us today to talk about sending your comic book to print and it's a very timely video because as it so happens, that's exactly what you've just done, right? That is correct. Uh, God, I mean, it's probably like, I don't know, three or four days ago. It feels very fresh, very raw. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's all it's all new. Talk about what kind of process that has been. Did it go as smoothly as you thought it would? Was it a lot more difficult? Were there unforeseen obstacles that ended up popping? Uh, well, if you? you want to talk about going back to, mm. you know, like, I'd always said, I've, I've got these completed pages, uh, um, you know, they're, they're done, the page is done, and then I, and then you're like, okay, we're not going to get them ready to print. And that was a whole process in and of itself. The actual yeah. process of I've got my print file, I'm sending it to print, that's mm. super quick now. Like I used to do uh, magazines, little zines, you know, little A5 things. Oh, awesome. It used to be a nightmare back in the day. You'd, you'd yeah, have to... You'd have to collate all your files, get all the links, make sure all you know, package everything up, yeah. put it on a DV a you know DVD disc or something, and send it off. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, now uh, I went through Mixum to print the Lucent. It's so easy. Awesome. It's all the quotes are there. You just upload your files. You can see it. Uh, they have any question you could ever have with regards to how they want the files supplied is on their website. This, I'm not. Okay. I'm not paid to say this, uh, but I'm just saying. Like back when when I was in, it was like 2009, I reckon. Yeah. I was printing my uh, rollerblading scenes, um, mm. night and day in terms of that process. But the but the process of getting from I've got pages done, lettered, coloured, line art all done, to I've got a print ready PDF, that took a long time. And it took a few sort of test test prints, and it was a it was a very steep learning curve. And I've been doing pre press since two thousand and one, but and never still ran into problems. Yeah, never comic book stuff. Right. So there's sort of there's, there's just little things you run into that you didn't uh, you didn't anticipate. Let's just say okay. Let's talk about what some of those things are, because I mean, if you didn't see them coming, then I'm definitely not going to. And anyone else <laughs> out there watching who is planning on printing a comic book are going to be blindsided by probably more than what you were, but at least maybe since you're here today, you can help us navigate around some of the, the obstacles that threaten the the production quality of our comic books. Hmm. Yes, yeah. It's all about getting what you've got on the screen mm. on the printed page as in the best way possible. It's never mm -hmm. going to be the same. That's like yeah. there's there's light behind your screen that passes through while well, that projects the image. Uh, so everything looks vibrant and cool, and you know you can't have that on a printed page. So you know that's what yeah. you're doing. You're, you're replicating that look, and there's a lot of steps that yeah, if you're uninitiated, uninitiated uh mm -hmm. yeah you're gonna you're gonna run into some issues and the, 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 the whole thing is about uh troubleshooting problem solving those yeah. issues like how do you actually if, you, if you, you can identify the problem how do you actually you know, fix it that's that's totally what yeah so in terms of what you use to identify the problem did that come about through the test prints that you'd done is, um, is, is it really the the only way to know for sure is it to s see it printed and then look at how it came out find out what's wrong with it and then tweak it on the pc send it off to the printers again and hope that it's going to be better the next time around no but that's how i got started okay so i did some test prints i think the first test print i did was this thing yeah now this is oh. my and this, I initially printed it with too much gloss on it. But anyway, this is my initial test print of this print. And cool. it was a nightmare because 
artists like avoid this i wanted this to look all blue and green the, the only yeah. highlights on this thing is a little bit of yellow in his highlights right. this is all one palette it's very difficult to get this thing to pop and then i since learned that blue especially and green hmm. very difficult colors to print in the extremes right in the, high, in, in the darkness and the light so you can't just lighten a thing like this up if it's too dark and i i felt it was too dark it, the colors weren't popping to what i wanted to be on the screen you can't just lighten up because what happens to the blues and the greens is it just takes away all the color all you end up is oh. desaturating the color that's 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 the nature of printing blue that's what you learn every color has its own uh, idiosyncrasies or whatever that word is it's its own little way of uh, being printed and I've since see. learned, yeah, I've since learned that many colorists have a little secret palette in Photoshop of specific colors that they know will print well. Like they know this purple prints beautifully, and they use that in their art. This blue yeah. prints perfectly, so they use that in their art, and they keep those palettes, and they you know go will go with them from job to job uh, wow. because they've just learnt that through trial and error. Um, so I. I don't know if this is the final version. I don't know if you can even actually see. Mm. Hang on, let me take it out of the thing. That's, that's a bit pointless. Um, I don't know if you can see. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's glossy, but uh, I can see it in in real life. They, it's subtle. Yeah. These there's actually blue here, whereas this is all just black. Um, right. But uh, but uh, you know, I learned doing this the limitations mm -hmm. of certain color palettes. So I probably wouldn't do this again where I've just got, it's a monotone palette of blues and greens and yellows and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm still happy with how this came out. It, it does look a lot better. It looks beautiful. I've got, I've got red and green lights here, so it's all probably playing with everything. Um, yeah. But I did notice that on the highlights, I did lose yeah. the color because I wanted it to be right. light. And if I had it, kept the color then i sacrificed the lightness yeah all these little things you have to think about um, yeah that's good uh, and, and, and that was a trailer so that was the first thing that was like i was like oh there's something going on here mm. so uh i went on a little bit of a thing that i normally do which is i'll go and go onto youtube and mm. sort of see what other people are saying see what other colorists are talking about you know just search comic book coloring pre-press color issues troubleshooting that sort of stuff Absolutely. and um uh that is that's what i did and that's where i learned about these secret words like uh, ink levels k values um right. I, I learned that different colors have different thresholds rob's saying what colors you should you avoid for printing yeah. it's not specific colors it's color ranges so i've learned that you should avoid colors that when they're transferred into cmyk their k value is higher than 50 percent. that means the amount of black in the color is higher than 50 percent once you get up to 50% is okay, 60%, all right, for a little bit, like a, a little area in a really dark area. 70, like you're starting to get into really muddy, uh, like it's going to print really muddy. Yeah. And um, uh, so, you know, I was just absorbing all this information and then, uh, you know, I had to figure out ways to essentially fix my art footprint. Wow. Uh, and that's what I spent maybe the last, you know, month and a half, two months doing while I was getting all the lettering done, uh, while I was just, you know, fixing up some other last minute, mm. last minute issues. Cause, uh, yeah, you know, and this is all, it's a learning curve. So I, you know, it's something that, okay, well, I now have this information going forward. I can set up right from the beginning okay. rather than having to do it all at the end and take a month and a bit. Yep. But you, you ended up having to do that anyway, right? I ended up having to do that pretty much everything. Yeah. So yeah. because so I, I learned that, uh, well, first of all, here's something, here's a yeah. tip out there for all you comic book colorists, turn your screen brightness down. 
turn it down to a point where you're like, that's too dark, and then turn it down a little bit more. <laughs> really? Initially, yes. Initially, you'll think, no, this is way too dark. Just sit there for a while, do something else, maybe go on to Twitter or whatever. Let mm -hmm. your eyes adjust. Yeah. I have a very bright screen. I have a retina screen, a big iMac 24-inch mm -hmm. retina, beautiful screen. I've got it sitting on yeah. about half brightness now. I could turn <laughs> it down even more. But I, I used to color in full brightness because I thought, well, I want it to be, I think that was the 100% wrong thing to do because I was totally. seeing colors um, that I thought were light that aren't actually, that's just the screen turned up uh, mm -hmm. to maximum, you know, luminosity. So yeah. that's tip number one, turn your screen brightness down. I heard a guy say he has his on 30% brightness. 30% uh, brightness. Yeah. So he, you'll actually work at that brightness. Does that yes. mess with your eyes or anything like that as you're working? I think it actually helps your eyes. I oh, think it, okay. it takes cool. a little while to adjust, but I think it actually helps with your eyes because it's less strain. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the brighter it is, uh, you know, the more strain you're going to get. Mm. Um, but uh, so that's something. Okay. I've learned that now. Okay, on. cool. Uh, I do that. Okay. That was step number one. Step number two is um, K values. I made a little bit of joke about this on my stream, on my stream where I said, uh, I'm stripping all the blacks out of my comic. <laughs> and what okay. I'm talking about is in the color, I went in and I had to kind of, kind of manually. I mean, I used, a, I used a, an action in Photoshop, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to do it, you know, all manually where I used a selective color palette, which is a very powerful uh, adjustment uh, layer tool thing. Are you familiar okay. with selective color in Photoshop? Yes. I use yeah. that a lot when it comes to the post-processing of my colors, actually. There you go. There you go. You will understand then just how powerful it is. It, oh, it's, it's incredible. It's a lot of, uh, finesse in there. There's a lot of it's, it's, yeah, really, it's kind of become my go to uh, adjustment um, thing. I you know I used to be more of like I get into the levels and the hue saturation. I do, I still, I still dabble in a bit of everything, but that mm. selective color palette, you can get right into exactly what you want. And you can, yeah. you know, you can adjust the blacks, you can adjust the colors or whatever. So that's what I did. I went yeah. in there and I just, and I'm lucky. Uh, let me show you. Uh, so I've got. So this is my this is my proof copy. I've got okay, one cool. scene here. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Go this way. We got to see it. Look one that. scene that's Beautiful. more like yellow and orange. Yeah. And then I get a scene that's more like uh, blue. Lovely. And then I've got a scene that's more like you know neutral sunlight colors. Mm -hmm. bit yellow and, and orange gorgeous uh, i've got a scene that's got a lot of purples in it and greens um basically uh, there's a scene that's very orange because it's all candled it yeah so you've so got a large range of color there i do but pay like the scene to scene it, the the color palette is all homogenous so in this scene that's the sort of palette that's the mm -hmm. atmosphere. That's the mood I'm going with. So once I'd done it once, I could mm -hmm. just apply it to all the pages in that scene. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's what I did. So I would go in and say, okay, how can I adjust the colors in this scene Yeah. in a way that um, basically pulls a lot of the black out of these colors? So that's what I do. You go into the selective color layer and you, you select red maybe, and you can pull out the black it's only it's got black right there you just like pull that down a little bit and okay. you'll notice it won't uh you know it won't affect the blacks it won't affect any other color than the one the color range that you're adjusting and it'll yeah. just it'll just yeah it'll make the colors less muddy it, it'll make them pop out so that's what i've been doing uh you know for a month right. or so is um going through that process and then uh, you know, once I started getting test prints after I've done that, now I start seeing, oh, yeah. oh, look at these colors. They're really so much more vibrant, so much less flats. They're not muddy. 
uh you know all of a sudden it was uh yeah it was a lot it was a lot um cleaner the colors yeah now with the selective colors did you take the black out of all of those colors or are you just talking about black itself so i'm i did both okay uh, because i also noticed that uh i wanted to have an even um rich black across all my inks mm -hmm. uh, and when you when you when you uh convert from rgb to cmyk the uh the black that you get automatically in photoshop is not necessarily the black that you want to print with mm -hmm. so uh, I can't remember what the number is exactly, but if you convert a, a full black RGB to CMYK, mm -hmm. you'll get sort of like a washed out black or you'll either get a washed out black. It depends on the, I should preface this. It depends on what uh, color profile you're using when you transfer to CMYK. Yeah. And uh, yeah. most printers have a preferred color profile that they'll tell you. Um, there are some others that you can use. It'll work on any printer. Um, but, uh, you know, when you transfer it into CMYK, it will, yeah, it'll mess with your black essentially. Right. And you've got to, I, you know, you got to go in there and make sure that your black is, uh, rich black. So it's, it's a nice, mm -hmm. it's, it's a nice, um, it's a nice, it'll, it'll print well, the black, uh, if, yeah. if you, if it's too light, your black, it'll look wishy washy. And not only that, you'll get like where the black meets darker colors. Mm -hmm. So like you've got a really dark blue in your, you know, in your art. And then it's yeah. jutting up against black ink line art. Mm. And the uh, the black isn't dark enough. You'll get like a white edge, which you don't want, obviously. Because, yeah, that's bad. Yeah, because what you'll find is that the, the ink in the blue is more ink on the page than there is in the black. Wow. Damn, dude, this sounds so complicated. It is. Well, I mean, no, it isn't, it isn't. It's a lot to learn, but it's it's not difficult stuff. So every like CMYK, all it means is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And each mm -hmm. one of them is represented by a percentage from zero mm -hmm. to a hundred. Right? So the maximum amount of ink you can put on a page is four hundred percent. That's a hundred percent cyan. 100% magenta, yellow, and black. Gotcha. Uh, so if you want to put a really deep, dark blue, that's going to be a lot of ink, all right? Uh, whereas the black, usually in rich black, it's going to be something like 100% black and then 30% cyan, magenta, yellow, and... Uh, yeah, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Um, and so that's, that can be like, I don't know, anywhere between 180 to 200. It depends on how, like some people like to print 40% in the colors or yeah. more. Yeah. So yes, I understand our, it's pretty no, no, overwhelming. It is. But so you work in, do you work in RGB or CMYK then as your color? Work in RGB. Yeah. Work in RGB as a colorist. Um, and then... If you're inexperienced like I am and was, uh, what you can do is you set up your, I'm hearing an echo now, I'm not sure why, but. Uh, oh, are you? Yeah, you can set up your Photoshop so that you can proof the colors. Mm -hmm. And then you just set that to some sort of CMYK profile. I have my preferred profile. You know, you could even just use a, or just a normal bog standard working CMYK profile and you hit command Y, you can toggle on and off a CMYK sort of proof mm -hmm. as you're working in RGB. Because there's right. so many options in RGB that you don't want to miss out on that aren't available in CMYK. A lot of those adjustment layers that we spoke about earlier that you like. Yeah. Um, but uh, here we go. Uh, Passion says... Uh, use a CMY col col uh, palette when coloring in RGB. That means use colors that are friendly in CMYK. And I've made that mistake many times. Have you got that palette? <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, you can. To you, you man. Can, 
Yeah. Well, you know, I, I haven't created a palette. No, not like right. I okay. hear other guys have. Uh, but, you know, you can kind of, you can actually see in in your color, like palette window thing, whether or not it's, it'll get a little gamut warning. Like this oh. is outside the printing. You get a little warning symbol. This is outside the printing range. Really? So Photoshop actually tells you that? Yes. Yeah. In your color, in your palette thing. If you open, if you like double click on a color and it opens up, you know, that screen with, it's got all the, it's the rainbow spectrum and it's from light to dark and everything. And you just highlight a color. It'll give you a little, if it's outside of the printing CMYK gamut, it'll give you a little, uh, you know, warning symbol and say that uh, this won't print. And I've, I ran into that uh, a bunch of times. So you have to just pick a color that is close enough now you never it's never going to be as good as the rgb yeah, of you know, course that, that's just that's just the nature of the beast so you gotta you've got to get as close as you can uh and if you have a palette like passion suggests uh that you know everything in there works well with cmyk you don't have to worry you can Absolutely. just you know use all those colors uh, from the get-go. Gotcha. Can you still hear that echo, by the way? No, it's gone. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, right. So that's that's a lot of messing about, but so important by the sounds of it. Now, when you say that you would make these tweaks and then get some pr- test prints done, uh, talk about exactly what a test print is and by prints, how many test prints at a time well, you get done and why you would get more than one done well i uh keep in mind when you get a test print done usually well every time it's going to be digitally printed so mm-hmm. you have to there's always levels to this like you can never get it exactly right essentially oh, yeah. so they're going to digitally sure. print your file now you're still going to send it to them as a as a you know press ready print a press ready pdf in cmyk but they're going to print it digitally which means it's not going to if you are going to eventually print it offset it's not going to be exactly the same anyway right so now you've just got to understand that okay uh offset printing isn't as vibrant there's not as much contrast some of the colors you know like a, a really bright pink won't be as pink and all that sort of stuff but it's as good as you're going to get. Now, I got a test mm. print done on my uh, preview comic. Done. Okay. And I got it back and I was like, uh, this is really dark. Like, this is not right. good. So this is what I got back. Okay. Right? And now compare that. See, it looks fine like here, like that. But compare that to that, right? Uh, the the, the yeah. difference Big is... Big difference. Yeah. If you, but if you see it in like in front of your eyes, like I do right now, this is like so dark. And mm. I, when I first got, I'm like, Oh God, I'm in trouble here. I'm going to have to figure this out. Uh, mm. and so this one was after I had gone through all these processes of reducing the K values in the black, making sure the black was all a consistent, um, rich black, uh, generally brightening things up all that sort of thing. And I was really happy with how, uh, mostly how this one came out. There were mm-hmm. certain other small, tiny issues, but they're tiny compared to uh, what I got with this one. And uh, yeah, so you know, it, so I got this test print done and that's really kind of the only way that I could have known at the time that there was an issue in my file. Wow. Uh, and the passion says, yeah, green is the bane of printing. Well, this whole, seen in this book it's like greens and yellows and light bl- i mean none of it yeah is what you would do if you wanted to make your life um if you wanted to make your life easy essentially oh, uh, so but you know we, we you live and you learn and 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 you and you move on but um yeah, so I, you know, I was just like, I'm gonna get as many test prints done as I need until I can get it to the point that I'm happy with it. Mm-hmm. And you know, each test print, like a, a book of the, the, you know, this, 
cost about, I don't know, about 50 or so dollars. And I had, you know, five or so printed up every time I did a test print. So it's not cheap. It does add up in the end. Right. Yeah. But and how many uh, test prints did you get done all up before you uh, nailed it? Well, what I did is, is I, I perfected my adjustment techniques on the prints. So I get, I got a lot of test prints done of the prints mm -hmm. rather than of the books. And I only got one Smart. test print of the main book, but by then I had really, I, I really felt like I had a big handle on how to identify issues in the PDF itself uh, and, and on the Photoshop file. And we can get yep. into that as well. Yeah, um, for sure. So that I was, I was much more comfortable you know, ordering that because this book itself, this book here, I think was eighty dollars or something like that for right, one copy. For one. <laughs> this is an expensive comic book right here. Yeah, it's thick. It looks thick. It is. It's uh, it's eighty eighty four pages, I think. Eighty four. Mm, very nice. And Beautiful uh, spine on there too. Yeah, yeah. It's all. It's all very exciting. I can't wait. To see the uv spot but you know you, that's something you can't test that's something you you got to just kind of jump into the deep end and hope it works out all right so you're just crossing your fingers that that's going to work well, out i know i know how to do all that stuff um and i've done it before but mm -hmm. uh i yeah I'm, I'm trusting the printers that they understand what i'm trying to do and you know obviously i, I i'm 100 confident i've set up my file correctly I've done it so many times before. But, um, yeah, it's still scary because you know that's I, I sent them a lot of money. That's the this is the big bulk sh you know print shipment. Mm. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so going back to the dark and light version of the test print that you made, which you just showed us before, would people know any better generally? if you just left it as the darker version or is this is this something which is it needs to be resolved if it's not 100 percent spot on because well, i wouldn't never, have noticed the difference if you just showed me that you wouldn't you wouldn't you would have i think if you had have gotten the original hmm. uh you would have thought it's hard to see here because the light is right yeah. on it yeah, uh, for sure. you would have said oh, this is really dark yeah, i'm 100 gotcha. percent certain that you would have looked at this and said oh this is really dark i mean you can go out and mm. sit in the sunlight and read it probably perfectly fine mm. but uh, you know that's not how most people read hang on this page is here we go this page is pretty good so mm. uh there is the opening page okay of the thing double page thing and then yeah oh hang on i've done it wrong way that's the original right so you can see there's a fair amount of difference there. Yeah, um, there is. Uh, so yeah, yes, it had to be resolved. It had to be resolved. Yeah. And because uh, I had done this test print first, I knew that I'd probably the same issues that were in this book would be in my main book. And obviously that mm -hmm. has to be resolved. Sure. Um, you know, I, that is a right. smart idea though. It's, it's good that you brought that up in regards to test prints is rather than getting an entire book printed mm -hmm. and going ahead and getting a print done up that you are going to include within that campaign or even just doing a, a small preview version of, of the book and sending that off instead. Yeah, you can even just print, like prints are really cheap, especially through mm -hmm. Mixum. Again, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not sponsored by them. Uh, no, but, no, you know, I want to talk about that too, actually. Like you could just print out, a few pages of, you know, key pages, maybe pages that you're worried about, you know, get three or four prints done mm. and see where you are. See, like, how, how are your adjustments going? Like, how, you know, how, how close is the print out to what you were expecting based on what you're seeing on your screen? I look back at the art that I have up on my campaign page and I can see it straight away now because I've gone through this learning process. Now I see, ah, that is too dark. That cool. won't print right. Like so now, that I've I've learned something. I've, I've you know, my I have new artist eyes now where I can see issues. I'm like Neo in the Matrix. You know, you can kind of see things now that you couldn't see before. 
I see mm -hmm. like, oh, there's a problem issue there. Like there's a prob yeah. problem spot there that needs to be ad addressed. So, so once you go through this process once, the, I guess, gratifying uh, reward at the end is you develop the eyes to be able to see what needs to be done in the process of making your next comic book so that you don't yes. have to really go back and make any exactly. hardcore tweaks for a month and a half. Yeah. I th I'm hopefully, I mean, that's what I'm hoping. I don't know if it's going to work exactly like that, but, uh, um, at least I have a baseline now that I can go off. I mean, I can, I totally. have a PDF that I can, okay. I can put the files on the screen side by side and say, how is this sitting tonally? Like the values, you know, is it, is it, a, is it a significantly darker? Uh, is it light? Whatever it is, I can put them side by side and just eyeball it and say, well, that'll do well. But there's more things you can do. Uh, like Photoshop is powerful. InDesign is powerful. You could use those two programs together to actually know, to actually like identify issues in a kind of algorithmic sense, uh, if you want to talk about that as well. Oh, Absolutely. For sure. Let's do it. Let's get into that since we've hit upon the topic. So, um, ink levels. Now, I know you had a discussion on uh, pre-press with Murph, and I was trying to yeah. get Murph to elaborate on the ink levels. We mentioned it earlier how CMYK, the maximum is 400 uh, of all the ink. No, You never print that much. It would just come out like a... Essentially, mm -hmm. what happens is... the it gets to a point where it doesn't get any darker. It doesn't get any blacker. All it gets is the ink gets heavier and wetter and it takes longer to dry. Uh, right. Now, does the printer prevent that from happening? You know, let's say mix them. Are they able to identify that and pre pre take some preventative me measures? Yes. But if I were you, I would do that yourself because cool. if you take a page now, let's say here, I'll open this page up right here. Mm -hmm. Page like this. Okay. There's a lot of blues. There's a bit of yellows and greens in here. Okay. Yeah. So when I first exported these original RGB pages into C and put them into CMYK, um, the ink levels on here were through the roof. Right. Uh, we're talking up above 300. Okay. The maximum amount of ink you can print on a page that you should be printing on a page is about 250%. Yeah, across all your okay. colors, right? So if you've got 300%, it's just too much ink. Passion says it can cause fluting. It absolutely can. Uh, it it can fluting? cause muddiness. Fluting is when the, there's so much ink on the page, you get waves in your page. Ooh, that's right? terrible. You don't want that. No. Uh, you it causes muddiness in the colors uh all sorts of bad things can happen so just say okay i'm going to change it to cmyk right and now the ink levels are still too high uh and then you but you send it off to the printer nonetheless and you got heaps mm -hmm. of blue ink dark rich ink on there and the printer say we can't print this Right. We're going to strip this down. We're going to run like a, a thing over it. We're going to strip the ink levels down to a maximum 250 threshold. Right. All that's going to do is just suck all of the color out of your dark blues, and you're going to end up with gray. Damn. Okay. So, so how so do you do, do it yourself? yourself. <laughs> yeah. But let's Remember talk what about we that. mentioned earlier? Yeah. Selective color, baby. Uh -huh. You can so, pull ink from other colors. You can mm. like let the blue come out a bit more while you pull ink from all the other colors. It depends on how your page is set up, what it looks like. But essentially, you can get that two hundred. You can get down to two hundred and fifty percent and keep, to a degree, your colors intact. So how are Using you checking that it's at two hundred and fifty percent? Ah, ah. Uh, my new favorite window in in oh. uh, Photoshop. It's called the info panel. Ah. Are you familiar with the info panel? Never, ever um, used the info panel before, okay. but I I'm like how it sounds. 
I'm going to close some windows here because I'm going to have to go full screen, and I don't. Yeah. Um. Heck yeah. I, I don't want uh, me to uh, dox anything. So let me it's just. Uh, hang on. I'm gonna. So you're gonna give us a demo. Just gonna just gonna show you the power of this friggin'. Um, awesome. Power of this uh, palette. Uh, what is it called? Is it a window? Whatever it is. Uh, yeah, it's a panel, I think. Is it? Panel. No, yeah, window. Window, whatever it is. Why did that not copy in there? Oh, okay, all right. Sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to clean my uh, desktop junk as well. I don't know what's on there, and I don't want anyone to... Okay, okay, I'll open Photoshop. I will open... Uh, what will I open? Something, maybe my cover? How about that? Uh, or CMYK, that's probably a good thing. Uh, sorry about this. I know this is riveting. Oh, no, no, not a, it, I'm glad that you're getting your screen up, actually, so we can see some of this stuff. Uh, I think it's ultra, ultra important that, you know, when we're talking about selective color, the viewers know how to get to that because we're talking a lot of technical stuff here right now. But We are, uh, indeed. We are indeed. All right, mm -hmm. I'm going to share my screen share entire screen i've never done that before that's like scary now i'm going to be okay. on there all right okay uh, you can see that yeah i can see that all right i can bring see it up it. yep there we go all right that's okay all right beautiful so uh this is photoshop uh this is the my cover. I, don't worry about what's on the left here. That's just. It's all right. I'm just going to make product. this bigger so we can see it a bit easier. There we go. That's better. Does that does that work better? Okay. Awesome. Uh, window info. This is. I love this palette down here. Uh, this is awesome. it says CMYK down here. It gives you all the values. This I've set to. Look what you can do here. Actual color, proof color, like you do all sorts of stuff. Opacity. I like this one here. Total ink. Oh, what happens is when you hover over it, can you see that over on the corner? Does yeah, I can. Through? Yeah, yeah. It's 212. Small, it. It's small. That's a 212% ink coverage. And over on so the does left, it tell you the entire page how much ink is going to be it's on there. Over, it's what it's telling you is how much ink is being printed on any given spot. See, I've got my little cursor going around, it's moving. Oh. So here, this is like 7% black here on this green yellow area. And the mm -hmm. total ink in that area of the page is 137% ink. If I hover oh. over the black, uh, I don't know what's sitting at 41 there, but it should be, uh, there you go, we've got 40%, uh, which is a little bit over, a little bit sneaky. I uh, see. Rich, rich black is usually thirty percent, but I like to give it a little bit of extra punch because my my uh, my ink is a little bit thin on the um my line art uh, so compared you, to other people's. So you tweak it with the selective color, and then you go ahead and like you look at it, your info panel, and you double check that you've got it set to what amount for blacks? I've got it at forty percent on all the colors and a hundred percent black. Okay. All right. Cool. You can do thirty. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people recommend thirty. Uh, this is this has been a trial and error thing for me that I prefer forty, and it's as you can see, it's still under the two hundred fifty percent threshold, so it's not an issue. Yeah, um, gotcha. uh, now, for so, me, trouble areas were like the red mm -hmm. in her hair. Red tends to lose its vibrancy in CMYK, oh. so um, uh, you know that's that was always a big struggle for me with Ella's hair throughout the book is to getting it like printing well. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, it's right up there. It's on the 50% black is in this red. So that's like, in terms of bright colors, that's the tip top you want to go. I mean, you don't want to go any higher than that. If you want, if you're going to go higher than that in the blacks, you're going to end up with a very dark color which is fine if that's what you want like up here i've got a very dark color it's almost full black it's up at 90 yeah. percent you know that's what it's supposed to be but if you're if you want a vibrant color that pops don't go any higher than uh around 50 percent. it's just not gonna nothing's gonna happen right okay um, so that's a way that you can actually go into your artwork and this is what you're doing for a month man just double checking that uh the uh the colors here 
are um, uh, yeah are under. Now you don't you don't sit here in Photoshop and just like move your thing around, making <laughs> sure that you know everything is under two hundred fifty percent. That's not what you do. What you what you do is you do this after you've identified it. And um, yep. how do you identify it? Let me stop sharing my screen. Yep. Uh, because I want to. Uh, yeah, Jas was. Yeah. Yeah. He, Mixum, Mixum re re recommended um, 30%. And I did that in my tests. And then I ended up, I ended up going on 40%. But uh, I, don't, I don't know how much of a difference it makes, but it just made me a bit more comfortable because I did notice that some of my blacks, because I drew the lines too thin, essentially. And that's right. another learning thing. So I, oh. you know, like, I, I'm going to move forward on, say, you know, with my art, I'm going to draw sort of thicker lines, essentially, because I noticed that some things, they're too small and they you lose the detail. Like, really? Yeah, well, the, you know, you draw it kind of big yeah. and then you shrink it down to print it at this size and some of that detail just kind of, it's so small. You need a, mag you need a magnifying glass. But if you to, take like um, a, um, let's say, a, a title like Cyber Frog, for example, which has, you know, it, it's a more detailed style than the Lucent. How, like, do you still, is, is Ethan Van Skyver still going to see the same stuff pop up? Like, I got the first issue yes, of Cyber Frog, yes. but I didn't. Because I think his lines are actually thicker than mine. <laughs> I, I went no too thin on some of them. Yeah, I'm, he, has, he has more detail, but some of my lines were too thin. And what happens when the lines are too thin? Do they just they not just, show up in print? Do yeah, they blur they just, together? They blur a bit together. They disappear. It's like it's kind of like lost detail. Um, okay. So yeah, I mean, and again, that's you know, that's me learning as an artist. Okay, I'm I don't going to learn the same lesson. And I, I think it's going to go. Hey, you know, great. Um, I don't have to, you know, draw that small anymore. And I think that would might speed me up. Heck yeah, man! I um. I think that's that's a fantastic way of looking at it. <laughs> and honestly, as comic book artists, all of us could zoom out a little bit more doing this stuff digitally. It's one of the biggest mistakes we make. I'm probably massive. making it with Kozor, but um, it's a yeah. massive mistake. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to share, and I, I don't have to share my screen this time. I could just share my. Oh, cool. uh, no, I do have to share my screen. I do. All righty. Okay, we can see that all that. Good. Okay, so this is InDesign. So let me actually um, put that on high quality display so we can see. Uh, okay, so this is my print file. This is the Lucent Waking Dream print file. Now, the mm. other new palette that I've fallen in love with here. Now, what application are we in here? This is InDesign. So this is the layout oh. of the book. Can you see on the side here when I scroll? You've got all your pages. All the pages are in there, all laid out, right? It's got all the lettering on there. I can turn that on and off. I'll show the first page, actually. Let's not uh, cool. Let's not be bashful. Uh, oh, so beautiful. I can turn I can turn the lettering on and off. Uh, the guides are on. I can turn them on and off. You can see the bleed and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, let's go back up to the cover. Uh, so. My favorite palette now is this one. It's called Separations Preview. And this is where you find out if you have ink level issues. So you go to View, Ink Limit right here. And oh, I've got the UV spot on. Let's turn that off. You just set this number here. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm mm -hmm. setting it to 250. Okay. Right. Now that gives you a little, see this red here? Yeah. Little gamut warning, a little, the ink here in these spots is above 250%. Now, like I said, you can fluff a little bit, 260% is not an issue. Let's change it to 260% and there you go. They disappear. Beautiful. So between 250 to 260 is about the ink limit. It's not a massive issue, but just say like, if you were up to say, if you were to just transfer your RGB images into CMYK, you'll have things mm -hmm. in there as up to 300%. And if your printer says we don't want anything up to 300%, you probably shouldn't be 
so if your printer says to you, we don't want anything above 250% and you're giving them files with 300% ink coverage, they're going to come back to you and say, uh, we need a, we need a new file essentially. Wow. And so that you can see that in, they see that what it does there to the page, it, uh, it blacks everything, it grays everything out and just For every um, page on every page. Right. Right. Uh, so, and it'll, it'll show you any troublesome areas. So as I was going through the process, I was looking in this view here and just identifying any trouble spots. And then I could go into the Photoshop file and make adjustments. Say, okay, there's too much ink in this red area. So now I've got to go into that selective color and tweak the red a little bit to, uh, to push that down. Nice. Uh, and so that was, you know, th th that was sort of like what I was doing, uh, getting this and getting this all ready for print. So how did you get that little window up there? What is it? Separation. Separations preview. So it's in window, uh, output at window output separations preview. Awesome. A great, I love this little window here. That's fantastic. And when you pull that up, it turns everything to grayscale, essentially. Exactly. And, to, and you just, you want to turn it off, you just turn it off. And then you Great. get to see um, the thing. That pink that we saw earlier, that's the uh, that's the UV spot. Well, actually, nice. you know what I'll do? So that's a yeah. spot color. Everything mm -hmm. else is, um, everything else is, I don't know if you can see this here. These, these palettes are so small. So the spot. Yeah. It's called UV spot and it's a spot color. So if I double click on this uh, right there, color type spot, it's not process. And you can set it to anything you want. Most people set it to either like, I think most people that I know, I've always set it to 100% magenta because that's not really a color that you're going to be finding on the page. There's not going to be any no. kind of uh, <laughs> confusion. And you just set that. Um, if I, where is it? Is it, is it info? It's attributes. It's attributes wherever the hell that is, output, attributes. Uh, you notice there this little tick here, overprint fill. So that's an overprinted object mm -hmm. uh, over the top of my art. And if I close that, okay, so we can probably stop sharing now. Yep. Uh, and I'll open my actual uh, PDF file of the print file. Okay, cool. It's an Waking Dream print file. I can show you what the thing actually looks like in uh, in PDA, in uh, in Acrobat. All right. Awesome. Uh, stop sharing. Uh, Passion says CSP does this all in program. This, I mean, I just know I, all I do, all I use Clip Studio Paint for is ink at the moment. Um, I know it oh. is a powerful program. Wait, but, Clip you know, Studio Paint not, does that? That's uh, apparently, I did not know that. That's really, really interesting. So this is my print file, and um, that is the pre. There's the output preview of the uh, thing. And what I'm doing here is, yeah, I can turn that. Oh, ooh, yeah, I can turn that on and off. That oh, that cool. UV spot color, and uh, all it is is. Uh, a, a, a black like that's that's the plate essentially so that's right. that's the uv spot area so it's not actually pink the that's just the, that's just the color exactly that's just the color that i've designated to be it's a spot color um mm. anyone who's you know hasn't seen what it looks like when you like that's all these all these different colors that's cyan in grayscale that's what the plate yeah. will look like that's magenta you can see there her hair is obviously uh, darker there's the yellow on the page and there's the black on the page so when you start to put these all together that's how you end up with the final uh yeah, yeah the final things so that's how the cmyk works and then so the printers will know okay this thing doesn't print here that's the uv spot and it's it, out of all the colors it's it's a spot spot plate and it says mm -hmm. it right there in the uh in the pdf gotcha so you had a lot to learn there then. Well, I knew a lot of it already. So I've been, yeah, like I said, I've been doing pre-press for 20 years now. God, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Yeah, since 2001. 20 years, um, man. 
Yeah, but most of the time I deal in photographs. Uh, so photographs, I think, are a lot more forgiving than comic book art. Um, yeah. You, know, you really? get your white balance. Yeah, yeah, you get the white balance right. You get the levels right. You can kind of visualize it. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter that much, but um, uh, the colors that you use in comic books, usually more vibrant. They're popping a mm -hmm. bit more. Um, and it, it's sort of a lot more like, you know, printing. Well, it is. It's printing art. It's a, mm -hmm. the, It's a lot more important to get it right. Yeah. So uh, there was a lot, yeah, a lot more that I, there was a lot of things that I didn't know when I made the art to begin with. And that was most of the issue. I, I didn't know this stuff when I was making it. I thought it was fine because I had my screen turned up so bright and it looked fine on the screen. Oh, that'll print, right? No, it's it prints mm -hmm. like rubbish. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. So, you know, what you'll want to do is you will want to open your Photoshop file, open that, um, uh, what did it, was it the in, info palette yep. and just go around into your dark areas and sort of see what you're working with, like mm -hmm. convert it to CMYK and see what you're working with mm -hmm. and, uh, gotcha. you know, get a, get a bit of an idea of some trouble spots. And again, and what then, values am I looking for there when I'm, I've got the info panel open and I'm going over the top of every square inch of the page with my eyedropper tool? What what values do I need to keep in mind? You want to, the on, on, the, on the areas of color, where you really want the color to pop, you want the color to be vibrant and alive, you want to make sure those K values are not much higher than 50%. Gotcha. What happens is they get, they, the, those colors, when they get higher than 50%, they swallow the line up. They, and I know you don't want that to happen with that no. amazing, beautiful, intricate line up that you've got. You don't want mm -hmm. them swallowed by this muddy, uh, you know, print color. Yeah. And so, uh, that's something, but you know, if you've got a background and it's all in color and you've got like blended dark shades, it's not as important. Uh, if you've, if you've got m a lot more black in your, in your color there, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah, it's, it's when it's jutting up against all of those, you know, rendered lines and stuff like that, that you really want to, yeah, make sure that, I mean, essentially you sort of make sure it's not too dark, uh, uh it's um the colors work in cmyk mm -hmm. and like passion said a lot of them just don't yeah yeah you can and put your document to cmyk can can mess with a few things you get disappointed and i think you know some some pages i converted i could barely see anything there was no difference all i needed to do was a quick little adjustment on the um you know, on the overall K levels, but nothing much at all. And then on other pages, I'd convert to CMYK. And like I said, all of the, all the vibrancy out of the blues just disappeared. Mm -hmm. All of the vibrancy out of the reds, the deep, dark reds, gone. And there's no wow. getting them back either. You, you can't retweet? To, on some colors, you can't. Like I had wow. on my, um, yeah, some colors you just have to bite the bullet and say, this is as good as I'm going to get mm. because you can't have it that dark. You just can't have it that dark. It's going to be like 320% total ink coverage to get it that dark and that vibrant. It's not going to print right. like that. It's going to print like mud. So you've got to make a kind of an executive decision. How light, like how much lightness do you want versus how much color? And on, yeah. I found on the reds, that was a real big uh, fight the whole way through. Yeah. It, it, it didn't want to, didn't want to help me out there. No, no, it's a very rich color. So mm. that's organizing the document, preparing that, getting it ready to send off to mix them, uh, which is the chosen printing company that you went with. How come you went with mix them? Because I've received so many, great looking comic books that went through mixum 
And I thought mm-hmm. this is my first big print run. I don't want to gamble. I, I don't yeah. want to gamble with other printers who maybe haven't, don't have too much experience with printing comics, don't know how to handle them, don't know how to bind them in a way that's satisfactory to the readers. We have a lot of collectors. Like, I don't want... We do. I don't want them just giving me a sort of like a normal... Like what the same that they would do with a uh, you know annual report at some company where no one really cares how it looks at the end of the day. Uh, you know, as long as all the information is printed, everyone's happy. I didn't yeah. want that. I've seen, I've seen uh, Matt Laminate with UV Spot on a bunch of books, and it looks exactly like I want. So Sweet. I said, uh, I'm just going to go with this company. On top of that, it's super easy. Uh, okay. Like I said earlier, it's really easy to just go through their process. You just upload the file. You can see it in front of your eyes. You can, you know. Flip through the book on the so screen. by file. You mean the P- the finished compiled PDF? You upload that yeah. to the site, and then yeah. they actually have some kind of interface on there where you yeah. can. Okay, yes. cool. And yeah, you can um, you can yeah flip through the book, make sure it's all come in in order. Uh, you know, it, you can see the 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 cut lines and everything. Oh, like uh, the the bleeds and stuff. The bleed, yep. You can see. Awesome. They even have a little th- thing where you can see sort of like where your if you have a, a perfect bound like I do. Um, you uh, you can see where the thing is gonna like, it, the image is gonna disappear in the spine. Wow, um, that's awesome. So yeah, that was actually quite helpful. Getting this done. There's a page. I'm not going to show it because it's a bit of a secret page I haven't shown yet but uh, there was a page in here where I had the guy too close to the spine and his arm was over it and his arm got sucked into the spine so he looked like he had a little paddle arm <laughs> so I ended up luckily I had that art all in layers I was able to just move him over shrink yeah. him down a little bit and then I actually extended his arm so my final art his arm is really long right in the art. Because it goes right over the spine. So when it folds out, it appears like the art, like his arm is a normal length because a lot of that just gets sucked into the spine. So again, another lesson I learned. That'd be really useful for double page spreads, right? Yes. Essential. Essential. Like get, if you, if you're printing perfect bound, you need a physical proof because I guarantee you, even as careful as you are, and I was very careful, Eric Eric Weathers will know this. I was very careful with how close the lettering got to the board, got to the spine. I was like my number one rule. I said, I don't really have any rules other than you can't put any lettering this close to the spine. Did um, Eric kind of already know that being a professional letterer? Uh, well, no, not really, but he understood what I meant. He understood yeah. what I meant. Like he initially put it in the place where he thought it was best. Okay. And uh, like in terms of the panel. And I said, I mean, it looks great. We can't do it. I'm not having it. Gotcha. Uh, I'm awesome. not having anyone having to dig into my spine just to be able to read the book. And it's a kind of right. a pet peeve of mine because and I understand why it happens. It's because a lot mm-hmm. of people print perfect bound copies of their books that they designed for uh saddle stitched comics that it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. matter you open it flat it's fine you can see everything yeah. but they just transfer that into a perfect bound book and you lose a whole lot of lettering i mean i've had comic skate books where i'm like i can't i can't actually read this it's so far into the gutter it's lost for so, sure uh, you don't want that so with the mix and printer that you went with, was that an Australian? Because I mean, I know they're an American company, but do they have Australian branches? I think they're actually a UK company. Oh, okay. So, right. Um, I am getting the bulk of my stuff printed in the UK, which okay. is not optimal. Again, I think the next time around, what I'm going to try and do is uh, print locally for the bulk. But I think for this you first that time, with you can't do it for no. They don't have an. They don't have enough of a like thing to do a big offset litho so there are obviously there's printers here in australia but i just don't know them and i don't really 
trust them yet. But once I've got a printed copy, I can go to a printer and say, could you give me this? And you know, I want it to be this quality. If mm. you can give me this, I'll go with you. But did you get the replicator? Uh, I did. I did. Yeah. I like the quality of the comic. It was more the 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 matte laminate and UV spot. Um, oh yeah. I issue. see. Yeah. Because uh, they don't so, really do that, do they? And, and no, and the replicator isn't perfect bound either. Yeah. So Rob got a test of that, and it didn't work at all. With his printer. oh it didn't work no they do they, they don't obviously don't do the same uh process yeah i got you okay cool man that's really interesting so when you jump out of the mix some website and you've uploaded your book and you've got it all set up does it at the end give you an estimate as to how much it's going to cost you to print you get the estimate from the beginning copies? you can log in like any time and you put in how many copies you want, all the details, oh, cool. it'll give you the price right then and there. That's amazing. Yeah, except for the shipping. So, I mean, but you can right. go to the next page Obviously. and then you get the shipping. So and in Mixum Australia, it's pretty much like free shipping. All my prints oh. I've done through Mixum Australia, it's all free shipping. So, so wait, so Mixum does have uh, an Australian branch here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have an Australian branch, but they just can't do offset which is what you need if you're going to be printing, say, a 1,000 books or something. Because the digital, way too expensive. I think this, this uh, you know, 12-page comic would have cost me like $2,500 to print in Mixum Australia because it would have to be digital, and it's too many copies. So right. it's actually, you know, cheaper to pay for the shipping from the UK uh, to get here it was actually oh, okay. less than less than half price, much less That's than half insane. price. That's insane. To get it printed in the UK and shipped here than it is to print wow. it here. So would you recommend most Aussies go for that option then, just get it done in the UK and then ship it, it over here to Australia? It depends, it depends on the option. So there's obviously there's lots of printers you can do it, like Rob's printing it here locally for the replicator and it looks great mm. if you just need a comic. If you've got other things... Um, I was just happy to Perfect go with Mixum because class. exactly. I was just happy to go with Mixum because it's like it'll all be consistent, the same printer with all my books. So I got my my main book and my preview book all done in one package, essentially. Hmm. Uh, I just thought that was that was easier for me to do. That's um, great, and they don't have a problem printing over there in the UK and then just sending it here to Australia for you. No, no. I spoke cool. to them about because I was really kind of miffed when I said, "What do you mean, Mixum Australia can't do this? They don't have the option. You can't do matte lamination with spot gloss, and and you also can't print in high numbers because they don't have the connections with the uh, offset printers." So, wow. hopefully, that'll change uh, soon as but, they grow. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think it might change actually because this comic creating crowdfunding thing that we've caught on to is only growing bigger it's going to get more popular as artists don't see the the larger companies as a viable option anymore for their future and decide mm -hmm. to just go their own way print their own books self-publish i'm really excited about it man I, I think mixum as a business is certainly going to benefit from that they seem to have a, a very firm uh foot in the door of, of most of us independent creators i've heard some you know issues with them in the past oh okay i like not with me and i've heard right. most people i'm saying i don't know how many but the overwhelming majority have been very happy i've been super happy with all the quality uh the quickness the price everything so okay. i'll i'll be very happy I, mean, I say that now i haven't received my main books but uh you know, I've, I've been very happy so far, at least with Mixum Australia. Uh, they've been, yeah. you know, fantastic. I got these little postcards printed. Oh, uh, cool. These are for the, these are for the, the backers who From signed Mixum up as well. the mailing list. Yeah, you get like a, you know, you can print a card. That's and, fantastic. Uh, you know, it came out great. So, oh, yeah, yeah well, my wonderful. posters, my, my A3 posters uh, came they out do all great. That. They do all that. Yeah, they do everything. They just don't print in Australia. They don't print the big books in big enough numbers. 
So, so are you getting everything shipped over in, in one shipment, the posters, yes. the comic book? No, no, no. I've got everything. It's it, from UK. I'm just getting the, the main book and the, oh, preview, right. the preview book. Yeah. That's it. Um, oh, okay. So you went yeah. with the Australian mix. I went with the Australian one for all the prints and yeah. postcard and that sort of stuff. Um, gotcha. That's really cool, man. That's fantastic. So when when do you expect your comic books to rock up from the UK? How long do you have to well, wait? Well, they gave me they gave me an estimate, but I don't know. I mean, I don't – maybe. They, they, they said the 25th of June. I don't see that happening. Um, but – uh i don't think it's going to be too long you know it's gonna you know it's, it's coming express which is cool like for a, such a massive uh shipment um and yeah you know that's huge man and are you expecting them to turn awesome. up to your doorstep on pallets yeah i think so i think so that's crazy I mean, we'll see how, scary? how it works yeah well you know Hopefully it's not raining that day. Otherwise, I'm going to tarp out and protect. Are you just them. getting it delivered to your house? Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Why man, not? That is just a surreal thing to think about, man. Those those pallets intimidate me. Like, holy crap! This, this got, is getting uh, real now. Yeah. Well, it got real when I ordered uh, 1,100 quick pack mailers. Oh it got yeah. Real then too, and I was at work actually, and Mel had to receive them. And they just took them off in bundles of twenty five off the truck and left them on our in our driveway. And there was a thousand of them. Yeah. Yeah. So now they're all in our kitchen. And oh, some of them man. are in our shed. And the Mel's yeah, understanding of Well, it's it. it's yeah, it's like a motivation to do the fulfillment quickly. The, <laughs> yeah, the quicker sure. we do the fulfillment, the sooner those all that cardboard is out of our living space. Yeah. No, I hear you, man. That's great. Um, so the only other thing that I'm going to ask you is when it comes to – so once you get the, those books delivered, because we've covered a lot of ground here. We talked about preparing yeah. it for print, actually going to print, getting it sent over from wherever you're getting it printed from. So Mixum sounds like the place to go to. I especially like the sound of their online platform where you can just see everything and how it's going to look. I, that's amazing to me. Because that's one and thing. You can do all that, no commitment. Like you can What's do that? all that, you don't have to commit to anything. Like you can oh, get the price, ridiculous. you can upload everything, you can see how it's going to look. You st you haven't paid a dime yet, and then you can just hit cancel the order if you don't want it. That's awesome. You, we didn't so, have this back in the day. We loved it. Oh yeah, man! How amazing is it that that we found ourselves in this place at this time in our in our lives as comic book creators? It, it's just at the perfect timing it's all so, coming my whole plan is coming together it is it is <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that in a second actually after i ask you about this whole fulfillment process and how exactly you foresee that working so do you imagine that it's going to take you a long time because I, I just feel like it's going to be a, it must be a massive ordeal to actually take a look at what every backer has ordered ensure that Mm -hmm. All their items are included in the correct quick pack with the correct address on it. And then, of course, to actually get it off to the post office, which I – I mean, how do you do that? Do you just rock up in some van and drop there it all There are some up? parts of the process that are still in the dark for me. I'm going to, admit, to discover all of that. Uh, I'm going to discover that. Uh, we're on pretty good speaking terms with our local post office people. They're very friendly. Um, but I think so. Yeah, I'll just be. I'll just let them know. Look, for the next month or so, I'll be rocking up with large numbers. Now, thankfully, I'll have all the you know labels printed, and I assume already all paid for. So it's just a matter of dropping them off. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but sure. Um, yeah, there's still there's still some things I've, I've surely got a lot left to learn, and I'll, yeah. I'll report back uh, once we'll have to do once another I stream. That out. Yeah, all about fulfillment. Yeah, because at I the moment, I, I just I don't know. I can't answer yeah. that stuff yet. I think it's especially interesting for us Aussies because so many of us are sending our books off to the US. So, mm. it's, you know, that our books have a long distance to travel. 
Um, and, you know, I don't know if post offices are the, the same here as they are in the U.S. and whatnot. Like, I feel like we're such small fries sometimes. Like, I think about my local post office and I can't imagine rocking up there with pallets worth of books to, to send off. And just sort of like standing in line. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know exactly how it works, but I guess, <laughs> Me either. you know. Maybe Rob's a warehouse done, you so it go can't to. be that it can't be that hard if Rob's done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so okay, well, well let's put the uh fulfillment process on hold for a little bit. We'll do another stream on that. But what I want to ask you about now is what's in store for the future of the Lucent. Because I know that, you know, in a similar sense to Corey and I, I believe the Lucent had already been somewhat done you took some time to remaster it make sure that it was mm -hmm. all set to go right yeah and uh and that was a whole process when you think about the lucent 2 if there is going to be a lucent 2 is it going Absolutely. to be a lucent 2? yes there's going to be a lucent many right uh, i plan on so, just keep on doing this so as long as people long want to feel read it's it, going to take you to i don't know I don't to make know. happen i'm are hoping... you intimidated are you burnt out from the lucent one i'm not, not burnt out no i'm ex more excited than ever to that's great you know to make comics but uh you know you take one, one step at a time you just take the next step in front of you that day and, and keep going hope you know i've I've done extraordinarily well here in the comics gate space. Uh, mm. you know, I'm pretty blessed in that sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, if I continue I on this trajectory, uh, who knows, you know, where that could lead, uh, you know, maybe in the future, it means, you know, I have, I have more time to focus on the comic. That would be awesome. That'd be uh, amazing. If that, if that were possible. So, uh, that absolutely is, a book too there better be i've got the preview comic right here we got oh, the, there you, you, know, go. you, get, you get 10 pages of it in, in in this package itself so you probably want to find out what the rest Ten pages of in the bank exactly uh i have a lot of other pages done and uh, they, they will need uh re-looking at remastering so to speak uh, because yeah you know all these things that i've learned over the last year i will um yeah you know i'll, I'll be having to apply to mm -hmm. uh to that book but uh yeah people will get the lucent in their hands and they'll see this is like a, a beginning you know this is a, an introduction to a world and i think it's uh, an original a great world i love it and uh it can go anywhere and do anything i think you're trying to build the same thing with kozal absolutely you know it's man. like it can there's no end to the stories you can tell in the world that you've created. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's my goal with it. Uh, you know, how long that takes, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, you know, hoping to have as much fun as possible along the well, way. Well, that's the key. The important thing is you're invested. And, you know, I think sometimes it's, it's easy to see the monumental task that you've gone through to get, the lucent done and then to and then to wonder whether or not you're going to be able to pull off the same feat again and i'm sure you have those mm. thoughts yes oh, absolutely absolutely because uh, it I was mean, such a success the lucent the, 800 backers it's amazing the w climate that i launched into when i launched the lucent is not the climate i will be launching into uh when i launched the second book so sure, my channel will be bigger. Um, I'll be a, uh, a creator who's fulfilled before. That's a plus. On the other hand, with every day, we're getting further and further away from that 2018 boom period where, yes. you know, people were getting, people were just coming out of the woodwork and getting $50,000 thrown at them for nothing. They didn't even have yeah. any pages done. So, you know, there's that to consider that, that, you know, the every day new people enter the space, increasing mm -hmm. competition, uh, people only have so much money to spend. So the answer to that is that we need more people. Uh, yes. And, you know, that's an ongoing thing. Who knows? In terms of but backers as a whole? Of, like yeah. I mean, you know, any individual backer 
only has so much money to spend and they're they're being pulled in so many different directions now because there's so many books they are um this isn't to say that the pie is limited the pie can expand uh, you know as as well bigger than we can imagine but we have to actually expand it you can't just wish it expands and hope it expands we've got to actually do the work to expand it and uh, whether or not we've that, done enough but hmm. i don't know in saying that do you feel like it might be more of an importance to place a focus on quality then rather than quantity so that a you can stand out and mm -hmm. get backers to pay attention to your project amid the ocean of other creators that are starting to pop up and also b the fact that there's not that many backers around with that much money to necessarily spend on premium independently created comic books so well, in other words maybe less right now at least until that backer pool grows is a bit more for creators because again they've got that time to actually create a solid product and then it's not going to be too much for a backer to then go ahead and you know get behind those projects it's not going to overwhelm them because they you know it's not like you're releasing 50 titles every year right mm -hmm. yeah and i i spoke a little bit on this uh i mean very briefly yes mm -hmm. uh, the other day when i just cool. I, I did a stream saying why uh great art matters it matters because it opens doors and it catches totally. people's attention in this increasingly competitive space oh, yeah. that we exist in but i do think that the uh you know the jury isn't in yet on mm. just how much time you can spend making something amazing versus uh pumping things out yeah manga yeah. pumps things out and they're going great and i think you'll find that a lot of the the audience there don't really mind so much that you know it's a lot of repeated art it's a lot simpler it's a lot done a lot mm. quicker they don't really care. They're just like, hey, I'm getting, you know, 200 pages in my story every three months or whatever. Uh, whereas, you know, other people are like, no, I want, I want it to be the t most high quality art that this artist can possibly do. So I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily like a, there's a one way to do it kind of thing. What I do know is that the guys who can figure out how to, make awesome art quickly are going to crush the game in ways that we don't even comprehend yet i'm thinking guys That's like okay. eric canetti uh oh, jose yeah. garcia who's here in the chat hell yeah uh, kenneth rocafort uh yeah know, th these guys are capable oh, yeah. of doing the the top level art in the game and they're pumping it out like crazy and i think in the in yeah. the years to come uh, that difference is going to be uh, heightened, uh, you know, ever more. Not yeah. Rob Arnold, no. As an artist, definitely. No. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's hilarious. Um, I I think that's the key, though, man, for sure. Um, is for us as creators to find artists, or if we're illustrating it on our own to develop styles that are appealing but easy to execute. And that's mm. definitely not a bridge that Corey and I have managed to make oh, yet. Me either. Corey no. is quite no. fast. Um, but I'm starting to think about pushing my style personally toward in a direction which is more similar to, say, because I always love Mark Silvestri. Mm -hmm. But then even pushing that further past Mark Silvestri to more like Michael Turner, who had that brilliant-looking art, but when you really get down to it, it it was constructed with a lot of slick simplicity that had the energy behind it, had the shape, but wasn't necessarily as rendered or detailed, um, at least not in the same way that you'd see you know, other artists like David Finch, for example, or, or Jim Lee. Uh, who have significantly more detailed styles. So, yeah, I think that's going to be a big challenge, actually, for, for many of us, and that those who have already conquered it, they're, they're going to own 
own mm. this small little slice of of the industry that we we've got. And by that, I just mean that their books will get backers every yeah. time because they will be both serving their their needs in terms of the quality of the product and also the speed at which it is created and sent off to them. I think it's a number one issue and I'm sure you are as cognizant as I am of it. Oh, that, yeah. you know, I'm constantly on the lookout art wise, finding ways that I can speed up my process. Like I, I, I physically can't draw faster with my hand. Like I can't go get any faster. <laughs> yeah. and so I've got to find other ways. Uh, totally. and that I think comes with experience, confidence. I'm already way fast. I'll tell you when I was remastering the book and, you, know, you probably mm -hmm. uh, run into this yourself doing the remastering yeah. of Kozor. There's a page, there's a face actually in the start of the Lucent. And I learned on the job, you know, I, I learned to draw comics by drawing a comic. I didn't do uh, test, test runs or anything like that. I just jumped in there, you know, mm -hmm. head first and went at it. There was a face in there that I just couldn't get. I must have drawn this guy's face 10 times. And by the 10th one, I still wasn't happy with it. Hmm. Uh, I I just said, that's as good as I can get it. Uh, when it came time to do the art edits many years later, and I, you know, by then I'd drawn maybe a hundred pages more. Yeah. Uh, you know, Joe and I were going back and we were looking at things and saying, well, how much time do you want to spend on redrawing things? And we were making that assessment. Oh, yeah. And I said, you know what? Um, let's start with the things that we need to change that like mm -hmm. stick out and will be, people will be ripped out of the story because they're like, what is that? You know, we don't yeah. want any of that. So we fixed all them. And then I realized, wow, I can actually, like, this is much less of a job than I thought it was. I went back and changed that guy's face in about 10 minutes. Yeah. Now, I, the first time I did it, it would have taken me hours and I still wasn't happy. And then I get it and I'm happy with it in 10 minutes. So there has been, uh, a speeding up of my drawing and that's just sheer experience so hopefully mm -hmm. as the years go on that experience grows you find that like we rob's talking about eric Kennedy in the chat Ro kenneth yeah. Rokefort, again these guys have uh, we, if you've seen dave finch draw live there's a confidence in their oh yeah their line art that you can only get through sort of mastery of the skill through experience so yeah uh, you know I, I am looking for new ways to get faster. Uh, that'll come with like art choices as well. Mm. Uh, but I think, you know, we may, it may just take us time uh, doing yeah. actual comic books because you know, doing art is different to doing comics because art, you're just trying to make the best, coolest thing that you can do. And yeah. You don't really care about the deadline, but when you draw a comic, you got to be cognizant that there are many pages to come and they have to get done. So yeah, uh, that and it's has a, to be weighed. It's a tough choice to make. It is, especially for your, uh, especially for independent creators in particular. I think if I was working on a book for Marvel or DC, for example, because it's not my creation, I'm a little less personally invested in it, and so mm -hmm. I could meet those deadlines quite easily. I could just get it done, do what I needed to get it done, and hand it in. I think when you're creating something which is close to your heart that you also want to impress other people with, like you don't want to disappoint your backers. And there's a, there's a lot riding on, especially a first issue, I think. Uh, you can't help but to sit there and perfect that one panel for an entire day. And I know that sounds ridiculous and that in, in terms of being a professional in the industry, that there's no way that that would be acceptable. But uh, there are times when I'm like, no, I like I have to get get this right, and and you get super personally involved with it, which is is something I've been thinking about. Like, is it always best to draw your own book, or yeah, right. should you, you really get someone else to do it? <laughs> who's more realistic with the? Uh, perfectionism side of things so people can people do it it can be done like eric yeah. canetti has laid down rules for himself okay uh, that govern his speed he's sort of like 
uh, in the moment, yeah, I'm drawing. This is what it is. If I didn't nail it this time, my attitude is, I'll get it next time. Gotcha. Right? So he's not going to go back and fix it, but he's at a level of art where it's not going to be terrible. So no. I wasn't there. But uh, yeah. uh, like I've been there where like if I don't get it right, there's a high chance that it could actually be terrible and you don't want to put that <laughs> out. Uh, you know, but he's 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 not there anymore. So he can make that rule. I know other guys like Joe Catapano, who works yeah. digitally, has made a rule for himself that he is going to lock his page at print size. So like he's working on a 11 by 17 inch page. Mm. And he's going to lock it at the literal print size. So that's, he doesn't zoom in ever. Oh, okay. No zooming, no zooming out, no zooming in. You can kind of, I think it depends on the resolution. No, not a comic book, but the page, 11 by 17. Like he can move up and down, but he's not zooming in. Uh, There is a way you can work it out. It's got to do with the resolution of your screen and everything, what the actual zoom is. Oh, okay. uh, And and it's got to do with your resolution as well. So, but yeah, Yeah. you could, you could literally just hold your page up to the screen and see, okay, that's the right size. And that's when he, when I heard him say that, you know what, that is actually really clever because that sort of, you know, I mean, it's a big issue of digital artists zooming in. Mm. unnecessarily and that's very uh, true and just costing themselves time editing details that are never going to be seen like what i did yeah man. And, uh i'm thinking i might actually take a look at that and see if it works for me well i think that's the cool thing right we've learned uh, so much from one another in this wonderful community of creators that we've got in comicsgate and of course, there's friends of mine in the How to Draw Comics, too, who I've learned a ton from. People like Robert Marzullo, uh, people like David Finch, right? And so, I, th- in fact, David Finch, by the way, he's about to release a new Proco course, which actually talks about creating a full comic book page and and everything to keep in mind. Which mm-hmm. looks amazing. Uh, so I highly suggest everybody checks that out. I'll try. I'm going to try and organize a time to get him on here to actually talk about it. It's just his schedule is is quite busy. But Rico is where I started. Like that's what's where that? I yeah, Rico is where I started when I was like, I want to learn how to actually draw like comic book people. Uh, so For I went sure. to Proco and like learnt all the techniques and everything from there. Yeah, I think the the first campaign that you do the first comic book that you put out there it's difficult because it's something that you really want to perfect but it's also important to understand that it's going to be a big learning experience for you Mm -hmm. and the second time around you're going to have a wealth of knowledge to go into that next issue with and i know certainly for me i'm going to be doing you know things like changing up my style a little bit uh even though i've sped up just as as you were saying michael I've looked at various ways in which I can optimize my process so that things yeah. That yeah. used to take a month now take me a week, right? Yeah. So, so that's a good thing. Um, but, yeah, it's – and, of course, the, the time at which I launch a comic book, I really want to avoid launching um, a long time in advance before the book is actually ready. I, I think that that's uh, yes. probably a big mistake. <laughs> That was my big mistake as well. I always remember Rob asking me very early on. It was probably just after I finished my campaign. He's like, what would you do differently? And I was like, nothing. It all went perfectly well. What are you talking about? There's nothing I would do differently. They went off without a hitch. And now, you know, eight months later, uh, I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. So (laughs) I, I as well will be. And but now I now I understand better what it means. Like just because yeah. you've got your line art and you've done the coloring, uh, doesn't necessarily mean your art is ready to print. Uh, you might need to check it. It may be like you might you might be a professional colorist and you've set it up perfectly. I wasn't, uh, and I learned my lesson. And now going forward, you know, I'm not going to tell people I've completed these pages until they are ready to print. Uh, and then and as well yeah get much more of the comic done 
before launching because yeah i I think there's things that you just you're not going to be able to predict accurately until uh you've gone through it and we were in a similar situation to you where we said to people hey this book's like pretty much done yeah Yeah. but we were very similar but actually uh you know along the way you realize well actually we want to take it up a notch make it even better really blow people's minds that takes time do we want to spend that time we could put it out now or we could actually not take shortcuts and just you know smash this thing what's the best option here and you know that they're the the things you run into that you realize holy shit we can't be messing with this the next time around if we get Mm. another chance even to have backers jump on board for the second issue because and that's the thing at this point we're delayed so we better as hell make sure that it's an amazing comic book because if it's both delayed and not amazing it's going to be very difficult for people to get people invested the second time around i think so that's the way that that corey and i are looking at it i feel like every every first time creator goes through this though because again you don't know what you don't know and nobody can really tell you either they can give you warnings about certain things but you're an individual and you just the way in which you work the way in which you communicate if you have other people working for you the mishaps that can happen with people working for you it's it's quite unpredictable and sometimes outside of your control you discover a lot of yourself along the way as a creator i think and then you go into it the second time around a third time around a little wiser you know we haven't been doing this for years and years hmm. right this is a new thing this this crowd fund i mean when did uh when did comic skate even start not that long ago only a few years back right uh like 2018 yeah 2018 yeah. and there were there was crowdfunding before that uh but hmm. you know it, it's grown exponentially since you know in the last four years uh, i see andy monster says yeah have the book half done if not done before you put up well that's the thing if you're a new creator like we were like we are we thought we did <laughs> i mean i was saying yeah it's mostly done it's like 70 percent done i just got a few things to do it looked like it was done <laughs> it did but then you know th- i got an editor in six months on uh, you know, and then I was about to go to print and I hired a letterer. Like there's it, just certain things. I was like, oh yeah, it's done. And then I got a test print done and it came out all black. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm not as far ahead as I thought I was. Yeah. Uh, now I know better and I'm sure there'll be more things that I'll run into second time around again. But uh, yeah, you know, thankfully all the fans as long as you're transparent with them and explain the yeah. situation you know they're very understanding and forgiving uh as long as they can see yeah. you out there working and uh you know they know you haven't just absconded with their money it, that's yeah. the big fear mm. yeah mm. but uh you know um it's a it's a funny thing, yeah. I, I I'm hoping it's going to go smoother next time. Uh, but, it will yeah. for sure. I hope for, I hope hope so hope so. For my hope right now is that people like the book. That's my number one. <laughs> yeah, book. right. Uh, That's going to be all, a bit I, nerve wracking. I always said when I launched, you know, the big popular books at the time were Graveyard Shift, Cyber Frog, uh, Black Flag. These big bombastic action-packed uh 90s reminiscent stories comic books and Mm. the lucent is really not anything like that at all it's you know much more more, much more in the european style uh you know it's it's more of a slow burn um uh, all that sort of stuff now it's what i love I didn't know if I'd get any backers and then you get a whole bunch of backers and now all of a sudden you're feeling the pressure. Like you better, people actually told me, you know, face to face, you better bring it with this book. Like, I don't want to see yeah. you phoning it in. So I was like, okay, I hear you. I better. And that's, you know, what yeah. I've been doing all this time and, you know, making it because as well, you know, when you bring it out, so you've released Kozor, right? Just say you just said 
screw it. I'm going to put Kozer out now, right now, you know? Yeah, like, which we could do. The, exactly. And then you, so, so you get started on the second book. It's going to be such a disparity between the books. They're almost mm. not even going to feel like they're a continuation. So even though I expect my art to get better and my colors to get better and the process to go smooth of going forward, um, at least now I feel like there's going to be, uh, they're going to all look like they're part of the same thing, mm. uh, part of the same series. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, think, I, I think I just, yeah, I'm gonna start, put my best foot forward from the get go. And yeah, I think the, the other thing is, especially with first issues, I think, like we're, we're definitely not going to, because Co Corey has already done a large majority of Kozor too, actually. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, me too to with Lucy too. Right? It's so funny how similar we are, to be honest, <laughs> um, and, and the, the, the similar paths that we've followed throughout this whole process. But um, we're definitely not going to be going back and remastering that because that's already good. And also mm. at the same time, and this isn't to say that the quality of the second issue isn't going to be just as wonderful, but I do think there's a bit more importance on issue number one because that's the issue that's going to get printed with every other campaign that you ever put out. Uh, people are going to want to see where that story begins. And so if you're kind of, uh, you know, if there's a sense of shame associated yeah. with that first yeah. issue if you know that you phoned it in that you half-assed it and that it wasn't your best then uh you're going to have to live with that every time you do a campaign and you reprint that first issue so i think that especially if you're a first-time creator the focus should be on quality and if you are late make sure you're keeping in touch with your fans and and your backers, that you're keeping them properly informed and that you're working your ass off on that book and you deliver a good product because, again, you don't want to be delayed and also deliver an underwhelming product. That's when you're screwed, okay? Mm -hmm. So, again, it's, it's two major things to do, I think, if you're delayed. Do what Michael has done. Do what we're doing with Kozor. The smart thing to do is to make sure you're keeping in touch with your backers through these streams, through the updates on Indiegogo, and also to to make a killer product that really does leave an impact because you know every time that we we talk to backers about this stuff they and i'll get emails back for in the updates that i send out and they'll say hey that's okay it's okay that you're late but we want you to have a killer product we would rather you yeah, we're gonna wait this long create a brilliant product than to write it. it yeah i saw it genuine comics uh is that dave uh yeah dave uh, apparently not in well thank you thank you very much dave i thought you had backed it but anyway yes thank you very much yeah you only get um you only get one chance at that first impression don't you hmm. so totally uh, All right, that's awesome. the way i well, see it i think that this has been a, a brilliant interview michael you have certainly uh given your fair share of value here today and i really do appreciate it it's been a little while since we've had you on a stream i apologize for that we do need That's to right. get you back here more often because you're just such a pool of information when it comes to the technical side of, of printing especially and i think we had you on here one other time showing us your perspective tricks as well yeah yeah well you know i i, I kind of you know i have my like what I'm going to, this is like how to draw comics. You have like yeah. legends come on to talk about <laughs> art. I'm not, like, I know where I sit. Like, yeah, I can draw, but you know, these guys have had 30 years honing their craft. I'm not here to compete with that, but I've learned some little things along the way. Yeah. So, you know, if anyone can gleam any uh, value out of these other things that, you know, maybe aren't as spoken about, uh, sure. And, you know, that's my expertise. I'm not going to come on here and and pretend like I'm an expert in craftsmanship of the human face or especially <laughs> the human hand. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think, yeah. The legend. Stick to what the, you're, uh, uh, yeah, the legend of the ginger red hand. Stick to what you uh, know best and, mm. uh, you know, understand where your weaknesses are and, uh, you know, work to improve them. That's my philosophy anyway totally always be looking to improve 
always be inquisitive, always be curious. That's one of the, that. There are some of the characteristics that I find uh, most obvious with you, Michael. Is that you? Whenever we go, on, whenever you do a stream, you're always talking about some facet of crowdfunding comic books, and I can tell that the topic itself has you curious. And, mm-hmm. and yeah. that what make that's what makes us so fun to delve into. So, guys, definitely, definitely recommend checking out Michael Bancroft's channel. You can look it up in YouTube. Look up the Just Lucent. Name. You'll find it very, very quickly. And we have got a link to the Lucent in the description below. I'm assuming that's still in and demand and people can back it, right? Yeah, I'm of the mind just to have something to sell. Like, that's my motto. Hmm. I like to always have something to sell because you never know when you're going to, someone's going to see you for the first time and they're going to say, oh, I like this guy. I like what this guy's showing. Where can I get something? Exactly. And uh, as, long as, as long as the book is selling, I'll keep it up, uh, you know, until the next campaign. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's, uh, back the Lucent, there's, there's the book, there's puzzles. You can even mm-hmm. get... And we've talked a lot about improving your art. You can even get the unedited edition. That's the last Ooh. thing I need to print. I'm, ju- I'm actually just finishing up now with the print file. That's cool. Uh, that is the that is the original book in the original layout. You get like twelve panels a page, Clayton. It's insane. What? Yeah. Well, I was I was making it for like the French style albums. You know, big yeah. hardcover, and they put a lot of panels on that page anyway. Yeah. So that's I thought. Oh, that's what I'll do. Cool. Mm, cool. Terrible idea. Wow. So uh, original really lettering, did. original colors, original art, like no oh, yeah. fixes whatsoever. Uh, and cool. uh, yeah, so you can get that as well. And it will be shipping. I mean, really soon. Um, yeah. That's it's really being awesome. printed. Great. Well, you heard it. For, you heard it here, folks. Definitely check out the Lucent. Link in the description below. You can check out Kozor as well, but we don't have a link to that in the description. I want you to click that link to the Lucent first and just take a gander at it. It's a, it's a little something different to what you'd normally get in a comic book, which I think is one of the biggest selling points when it comes to the independent scene that we've got going on here. And they're high quality. You know, It's not like in, independent comics from, from back in 2010 where you would just like get get random trash being printed. This is actually like proper professional looking comic books professionally printed that have interesting and unique stories and characters. So check it out. I like the Lucent personally because I'm a big avid uh, fan of Lucid Dreaming. And, and makes it makes me. excellent. Yes, it all yeah. ties in. And how? Oh, how? I started how? a new hashtag. It's called it isn't what is the Lucent. It's who are the Lucent. Oh. I'm trying to build up a little bit of mystery there and like actually start getting into the story. People will be reading it soon. You're ramping up for that second issue, I can tell. I am. I am indeed. Any idea when that might be? Uh... No, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to hold off. I'm going to, I mean, I'll be going into it pretty hardcore. I'll take about, maybe take about a month off after fulfillment to just cool. sort of recenter myself because it's been a hell of a year. Heck yeah. uh, but then after that, I'm going full ball into this thing and good you know, stuff, man. Back to back to full on comic book work mode. That's good. Yeah, take a break. You know, you got to fill mm. your cup back up. Yeah, refuel yeah. the engine, mm-hmm. as they say. All right, everyone, it's been an absolute pleasure, Michael. Thanks for coming on today, and to the chat, thanks for sticking with us. We really do appreciate it. If you'd like more comic art tips, tricks, and tutorials, be sure to visit www.howtodrawcomics.net. We've got a bunch of comic art tutorials on there, both written and video format tutorials. And, of course, when you're ready to take your comic art skill set to the next level, uh, check out our course library. We've got a bunch of wonderful people on there. Robert Marzullo, David Finch, um, Ed Foychuk. Lots and lots of instructors. Take a look through them. Oh, and by the way, uh, something else that I'll be – launching in the next week or so is a new service on how to draw comics which is mentoring sessions where you'll be able to book in an appointment with me yours truly personally one-on-one and i will listen to all your problems and help you solve them uh we can it's mostly meant for comic book art enthusiasts people who want to 
increase their their drawing and illustration skills in comic book art, but we can talk about whatever you like during that time. You're, you're going to be paying for it. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to, more to you about that another time, though. Until then, take care. Keep on creating. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.